I'm a Christian. I just believe in all my heart that he's a Christian. He says he is. Our country has a savior, and that's not me. That's somebody much higher up than me. Uh, two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. Joe Biden and I are both people of faith. The most radically pro-abortion candidate ever to run for president to serve in that office. It seems like every president we have had recently identifies as a Christian, as a person of faith. President Barack Obama, President Donald Trump, and President Joe Biden have all been very public about their belief in Jesus Christ and in how much they value their religious life. But there's something unusual about what all three of these men actually believe. Watch what Barack Obama says about being a Christian here, which sounds pretty encouraging at first. I'm a Christian uh, by choice. The precepts of Jesus Christ spoke to me in terms of the kind of life that I would want to lead. And I think also understanding that, uh, you know, that Jesus Christ dying for my sins uh, spoke to uh, the humility we all have to have as human beings, that we're sinful and we're flawed and we make mistakes, uh, and that uh, you know, we, we achieve salvation through uh, the, the grace of, of God. Again, what Obama said here sounds pretty great. He talks about the precepts of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ dying for my sins and achieving salvation through the grace of God. All of this is very true and exactly what people need to believe to be saved through the gospel. Again, listen to what Obama said here in an Easter message, which sounds great as well. It is only because Jesus conquered his own anguish, conquered his fear, that we're able to celebrate the resurrection. It's only because he endured unimaginable pain that racked his body and bore the sins of the world that he burdened, that burdened his soul, that we are able to proclaim he is risen. Let me repeat, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So we are here today to celebrate that glorious overcoming, the sacrifice, uh, risen Savior who died so that we might live. Once again, everything Obama said in this Easter message was absolutely true and even very encouraging. Jesus indeed endured unimaginable pain on the cross so that sinners like us could be saved. And the message of Easter is indeed to celebrate Jesus' rising from the dead so that we might live. And it's precisely because Obama says things like this that many Christians believe Obama to be a genuine Christian who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ and is saved. Watch Joel Osteen defend the authenticity of Obama's faith here. Well, I would tell them that I've been with the president at the Easter breakfasts, not five feet away from him, heard him talk about his faith, talk about redemption, talk about salvation. And, you know, I just believe in all my heart that he's a Christian. He says he is. As we saw from the clips earlier, Obama has indeed said things about sin and salvation that true Christians believe to be saved. At the same time, Joel Osteen saying that he believes with all his heart that people are Christians simply because they say they are Christian doesn't seem to mean very much because he seems to believe that even someone like Oprah is right with God and does not need to turn to the true gospel to be saved. Today we are so honored to have a world changer, a history maker, one of the great voices of our generation, Ms. Oprah Winfrey is right here on the floor. Similar to Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes is very adamant that Barack Obama's professed faith in Jesus Christ is genuine. And really quickly, if you want to support this channel and help spread biblical truth to more people, I would be so grateful if you would click that subscribe button. Jakes was very offended that Franklin Graham would even suggest that there might be something off about Barack Obama's supposed Christian faith. Reverend Franklin Graham has made some comments on several occasions as recently as three weeks ago, uh, really questioning the faith, if you will, of the president. He said the president has told him that he's a Christian, but he basically said that going to church does not make you a Christian. But the president is on record as saying that he walked down that aisle, he gave his life to Christ. So what do you say to folks like Reverend Graham, who frankly are mudding the water, but other people who are questioning in the Christianity of this president. I find it insulting. We didn't question the Christianity of President Bush when he said he accepted Christ. And I, I, I'm disappointed in Reverend Franklin Graham in that regard. I wish he had the diplomacy of his father who brought the gospel to people without being nuanced by politics. Uh, because when you do those things, you offend people that you're actually called to save and to serve. I would hope that he would see uh, the rationale and apologizing for such statements because if the president that his faith is suspect, then all of our faiths are suspect because the Bible is quite clear about what it takes to be saved. And the president has been quite open about his accepting Christ and him openly confessing it before men. And if it's good enough for the Bible, it ought to be good enough for the rest of us. I certainly agree with you on that. However, another Christian besides Franklin Graham who questions the faith of Barack Obama is Pastor Vody Balkum, who pointed out in a CNN interview that what Obama believes and publicly promotes is very contrary to what the Bible clearly teaches. The bottom line on that is people look at at this ticket and their fear is that we will have Barack Obama as our president, that we will be moved toward a socialist agenda, that we would have the most radically pro-abortion.
candidate ever to run for president to serve in that office. And that is an untenable position for evangelicals. First John 5, 2 says, By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. One of the greatest sins is to unjustifiably end the lives of other human beings. And Obama not only tolerates this evil practice in America, he is actively promoting and celebrating this right to end the lives of unborn babies. The question is, can someone be a genuine Christian and at the same time completely disobey God on this issue? Pastor Vody also points out Obama's extremely dangerous views concerning cultural Marxism and race relations. I started writing about cultural Marxism in the mid, well, in the early 2000s, somewhere around 2005, 6, 7. Blogged about it intently, uh, intensely in 2007 during the election because of what I saw as the incredible threat of Barack Obama, who was a massive cultural Marxist. And in my opinion, then and now, a dangerous man on a number of fronts and for a number of reasons. Obama promotes and advocates for numerous policies that are both anti-Bible and anti-Gospel. He consistently chooses to side with culture, values, and champions, rather than what God has clearly revealed in the Bible. Besides what Pastor Vody has already brought up, there have been several instances where Obama seems to belittle the role of God and the Bible in the world. You had legislation reaffirming that in God we trust is our motto. That's not putting people back to work. I trust in God, but God wants to see us help ourselves by putting people back to work. I'm just wondering why Obama would be attacking legislation that reaffirms a motto like in God we trust. And not only that, why he would be saying something like God wants to see us help ourselves, as if God doesn't want us to pray and trust him and his sovereignty over all of creation. It seems like Obama doesn't want God to have anything to do with how America runs at all. This idea is reaffirmed by what Obama says in this next clip, where he even goes so far as attacking and mocking the Bible. Whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation, at least not just. We are also a Jewish nation, and a Muslim nation, and a Buddhist nation, and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. And even if we did have only Christians in our midst, if we expelled every non-Christian from the United States of America, whose Christianity would we teach in the schools? Would it be James Dobson's or Al Sharpe's? Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with Leviticus, which suggests slavery is okay, and that eating shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go with Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own defense department would survive its application? It seems clear that Obama believes that God and the Bible should have absolutely nothing to do with the decisions that lawmakers make about the direction that America should go in. Obama even tries to undermine the authority and legitimacy of the Bible by mocking some of its teachings. But clearly, Obama is not interpreting scripture correctly, because there is a very simple interpretation regarding what Obama says about eating shellfish in Leviticus. I pick and choose because I understand that there are three different types of law. There's moral law, there's civil law, and there's ceremonial law. You see, I understand that the moral law, which is really based on the Decalogue, is that law that transcends time and culture, and that those are things that are true for all people in all places at all times. However, there is a civil law that God gave to Israel in the ancient Near East for them to function as a culture then and there. Those things cannot just be taken over from that culture to our own. Thirdly, there are ceremonial laws which taught Israel about its worship. Those things cannot just be brought over whole hog either. For example, the laws in Leviticus that relate to the temple, we couldn't do those things if we wanted to. And here's a clip of Obama criticizing people for opposing particular agendas because they are clinging to religion. People have been beaten down so long, and they feel so betrayed by government. No, it's not surprising them that they get there and they claim to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't like them, or, and a way to explain their frustrations. Obama might verbally profess to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he may have said some very good things related to the gospel, but it seems clear that Obama's worldview as a whole is far from Christian. Obama is fully in and accepted by the world and the culture, and he stands directly against many, many things that all Christians should be standing for. Similar to Barack Obama, Donald Trump has said things about Christianity, Jesus, and the Bible that sounds very encouraging. Here's Trump recognizing that he is a smaller figure in the world than Jesus Christ. Somebody said to me the other day, you're the most famous person in the world by far. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I said, no. He said, who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. It's encouraging that someone as influential and visible as Trump has such a high view of Jesus. When the House of Representatives was having enormous trouble electing a speaker, Trump commented that the only person who could solve this problem is Jesus Christ. I said, there's only one person that can do it all the way. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. Jesus came down and said, I want to be 
speaker, he would do it. <laughs> Other than that, I haven't seen I haven't seen anybody that can guarantee it. And in a Christmas message at First Baptist Dallas, where Robert Jeffress is the pastor, Trump said this about Jesus as Savior. Now, when I was listening to Robert, uh, perhaps unknowingly, you used the word Savior a lot. And our country needs a Savior right now, and our country has a Savior. And that's not me. That's somebody much higher up than me. Much higher up. We just do what we have to do. But the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ forever changed the world. It's impossible to think of the life of our own country without the influence of his example and of his teachings. Interestingly, Trump did not say that he needed a savior or that sinners need a savior, but rather that the country needs a savior. Now this brings us to an aspect of Trump's supposed Christian faith that is very troubling, namely his understanding of concepts like sin, forgiveness, and salvation. Take a look at Trump's answer to a question that Jake Tapper asks him about whether he has asked God for forgiveness. Well, let me ask you, because one of the potential attack lines has to do with an answer you gave to Frank Luntz months ago when you said that you've never asked God for forgiveness. Do you, do you regret making that remark? No, I have great relationship with God. I have great relationship with the evangelicals. In fact, nationwide, up by a lot. I'm leading everybody, but I like to be good. I don't like to have to ask for forgiveness, and I am good. I don't do a lot of things that are bad. I try and do nothing that's bad. I live a very different life than probably a lot of people would think, and I have a very Always great, I have now? a very great relationship with God, and I have a very great relationship with the evangelicals, and I think that's why I'm doing so well with Iowa. The life you have now, when you say that you try to do good, that sounds very different from decades of tabloid media coverage in New York, in which some of your wilder escapades were well, about... Well, I'm talking about, I'm talking about over the last number of years. Okay. I've been, you know, I mean, I'm leading a very good life. I try to lead a good life. One of the surefire ways to not be right with God and to not be saved is to believe that you are a good person who does not need Jesus Christ to be forgiven of sin. The entire reason why Jesus became a human and came to earth was to save his people from their sins. And clearly, Trump does not even believe this central foundational truth of Christianity and the gospel. Here's a clip from the Frank Luntz interview that Jake Tapper referred to, where we're going to hear again the troubling view Trump has regarding forgiveness, as well as another major problem with Trump's supposed Christian faith. Do you ever ask God for forgiveness? That's a tough question. I never think in terms of I'm a religious person. Shockingly, because people are so shocked when they find this out. Uh, I'm Protestant. I'm Presbyterian. And I go to church and I love God and I love my church. And Norman Vincent Peale, the great Norman Vincent Peale was my pastor. The power of God was thinking that. So again, we hear Trump saying that he has never asked God for forgiveness and does not believe he needs to ask God for forgiveness. But in addition to this, we heard Trump say that his pastor was Norman Vincent Peale. This is extremely significant because Norman Vincent Peale was clearly and obviously a false teacher who taught the power of positive thinking which is a new age and not at all Christian concept. We see elements of Peel's teachings in heretical word of faith teachers today, such as Paula White, who Trump actually chose as his spiritual advisor. This is one of the greatest men. And before we start out, we'd like to pray over him. And we know we are people of prayer. So will you stretch your hands and pass, um, President Trump, these are some of your greatest faith leaders that would love to pray over you. Pastor Jensen's gonna start, Apostle Maldonado, and uh, we love you. Will everybody just stretch your hands towards the president before before he gets up because we know that prayer makes a difference. Yes, prayer does make a difference, but theology also matters. And we saw that one of the people Paula White introduced to pray for Trump was called an apostle, which again is utterly unbiblical. It seems that the version of Christianity that Trump has embraced is a heretical version, the health and wealth prosperity gospel version that is not at all the true gospel of Jesus Christ that saves sinners from hell and God's wrath. And because Trump has such a weak or non-existent grasp of true biblical Christianity, he is even willing to accept this blasphemous ad that one of his supporters made, which compares Trump to Jesus. And on June 14, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. God said, I need somebody who will be strong and courageous, who will not be afraid or terrified of the wolves when they attack, a man who cares for the flock, a shepherd to mankind who won't ever leave nor forsake them. 
The ad calls Trump a shepherd to mankind who will never leave nor forsake them, which are words that should only be spoken about Jesus. But because Trump loves any praise that is directed towards him, even if it is blasphemous and unchristian, he is happy to promote and receive blasphemous words like those. Trump also reposted this tweet about Jesus sitting beside Trump in the courtroom, not realizing that Jesus is only truly with those who have repented of sin and trusted in him alone for salvation, which Trump clearly admits he has not done and refuses to do. Joe Biden is also supposedly a man of faith, a devout Catholic. Thank you, Susan. First of all, Joe Biden and I are both people of faith, and it's insulting su to suggest that we would knock anyone for their faith. And in fact, Joe, if elected, will be only the second uh, practicing Catholic uh, as president of the United States. However, like Barack Obama, Joe Biden supports, promotes, and celebrates policies that are completely contrary to what the Bible clearly teaches. Listen to Biden talk about his view of ending the lives of preborn children in this interview with a Catholic priest. Contentious questions like a has that been hard for you? It has been. It has been hard in one sense because I'm prepared to accept a fide doctrine on a whole range of issues as a Catholic. Even though, as you know, Aquinas argued about in Summa Theologic about human life and being when well, it occurs, I'm prepared to accept as a matter of faith. My wife and I, my family, the issue of of, 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 of a what I'm not prepared to do is impose a rigid view, precise view, rigid sounds uh, pejorative, a precise view that is born out of my faith on other people who are equally God-fearing, equally as committed to life, equally as committed to the sanctity of life, and I'm prepared to accept the moment of conception as human life and being. But I'm not, pre I'm not prepared to say that to other God-fearing, non-God-fearing people that have a different view. It sounds like what Biden is saying here is that he personally believes that the baby and the mother room is an actual human being who deserves life, but he wants to allow women who do not believe this to end the lives of these people he believes are human beings. As Pastor Vody Balkum said earlier about this issue, Biden's position is simply an untenable position for anyone who truly believes in Jesus Christ and the Bible to hold. This is why Biden was denied communion when he attended a Catholic church in South Carolina. You were in South Carolina recently yes. and a uh, Catholic priest did not give you communion. He said it was because of your position on abortion. Were you offended by that? Uh, that's a private matter. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, it's the only time it's ever happened, and we didn't talk about it. He went to the press about it, uh, and it's not a position that I've found anywhere else, including from the Holy Father who gives me communion. It was absolutely right for Biden to be denied communion because it should be obvious that Joe Biden, just like Barack Obama and Donald Trump, is not yet right with God and needs to truly repent of sin and to truly believe in the Jesus Christ of the Bible to be saved from hell and God's wrath. So my plea to all three of these men is turn to the true Jesus. Jesus of the Bible before it's too late. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth, and I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.